I've been watching this thing on 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 um World War II. So I was thinking, I said, man, I know we always talk about Hiroshima and Nagasaki and just the thing. Yeah. We always forget that it fought on like Africa, Europe, uh, what, Asia. You know what I'm saying? It's one of the few wars that touched that. Uh, 160,000 troops deployed on one of the biggest missions, one of the biggest armadas at, at one time. I, I forgot who was raiding who, but I know that was one of the biggest armadas. And it's like 16 battleships got blown up. So it was a big deal. It was. It was. It was a big deal. It was a big deal. Um, you know, uh, uh, the United States has, uh, some people say in order to maintain um, a democracy, or uh, uh, let me just go back, let's go back, let's go back, let's go back. First of all, democracy is, is, is a play on words. It's, it's a sham, scam, whatever. You, but, but that's not what America represents. America doesn't represent democratic principles. America represents the principles of an empire, which is why we say I pledge allegiance to the flag, United States of America, and to the Repub to the republic, the republic, which is an empire for which it stands. Our republic is, for want of a better word, an empire. And, and, and you can always tell them probably because they have certain characteristics. One is they're always at a state of war to maintain their hold on ill-gotten gains. <laughs> so you, you, know, you have to put it in that context. You also have to put it World War II in the context of Jekyll Island. Cool. 19, or Jekyll Island, 1913. Jekyll oh, yeah. Island, all the rich folks got together on Jekyll Island, Rockefeller, DuPont, Carnegie's, uh, uh, Penn, uh, Morgan's, and they got together in Jekyll Island. They wanted to form a new country because they already bought the country during that the last previous two elections or the last election, um, not expecting the, the president to be assassinated and Woodrow Wilson, not Woodrow Wilson, uh, Teddy Roosevelt taken over. He rushed it, it rushed in the era of, of of, of busting corporations. He said, big corporations only everything was ridiculous. So that was called the antitrust era. And one of the most notable of those cases was Rockefeller's standard oil. Okay. So after that, they got kind of, rich people got kind of, when I say rich people, I mean people control the resource, not the people who have money. There's a difference. Definitely. So the people who have, when I say rich people, that's the context I'm using. It. They got kind of concerned. They said, look, we bought the country. We still can't do what we got to do. We got to get a hold on this. Jekyll Island, they all got together and they passed some pieces of paper around that they all agreed to give the Congress under the presidency of Woodrow Wilson. And they would give this to him and he would implement it in the United States. And one of the articles of that meeting was to establish, reestablish a central bank. People sleep this, people don't know about this, but that is the almost singular reason why we have we have yeah there's a lot of other reasons they're all there's well, a few reasons reason why we have what the problems we have today economically socially politically internationally because the central bank the central bank is owned by a worldwide banking conglomerate they don't give a sit down piece about countries and all of that they did to make money when they pass that the united states like every other country who has a central bank does not print their own money and that's very clear for people to understand. The United States does not print its own money. The central bank, we call it the Federal Reserve System, prints our money. Jack Wilder is over what, South Carolina or Georgia or something like Georgia. that? Georgia. Georgia, right, by Savannah or something like that. Yeah. So, and that's the oh. thing, because if you look at what happened after that, you had the bank crash of 29, you had... World War I first, which is three years after the establishment of that, the bank crash of 29, as soon as we got back from World War I, then you had a prohibition in the 20s. Well, you hold had, on, though, because we're talking about war. Is any of this World Bank stuff having to do with the actual mm -hmm. direct influence? Yes. How do banks make money? They loan money. Who is the biggest borrower of the Federal Reserve? Who are the only borrower of the Federal Reserve? United Country. States. The United States in particular. They, they say, we need to make money. We need to make, how do you make, how did the United States get to spend more money than it had? By getting into military conflicts all over the world. And you got to maintain those strategic points all over the world, which means so you got you, to keep up. So what, so what, inflated budgets, and then they say we need 132 gazillion. Billions. That's right. 
and the, and the Federal Reserve coughs it up. Now we owe them these billions of dollars. You do that a couple of times, like in World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, Bosnia with the Church of Gavina. You have, you have the Middle Eastern conflict today. You know, Afghanistan 20 years ago, Syria. If you look at why haven't we stopped fighting? Because every time we fight, we need to have more money. So they got it. So I just want to let you know that's the that's the context that all of this is happening in. That people who control the money. Let me give you a better example. In 1938, I think it was 38, 36, something like that. Hitler was named New York Times Man of the Year. Let's repeat that. He was named New York Times Man of the Year. This guy was walking through Europe like a grant went through Richmond. You know what I'm saying? This guy was stepping over countries like, and they were letting him do it. Oh, he let him but not him. at that time, though. When did he start that campaign? That was 1938 he started that campaign, right? Nah, that's what, nah, not really. I think it was more, no, it could have been 38. Had to be earlier. Had to be earlier, 36, 37. Let me tell you why. Because when the Depression hit, things got so bad in Germany. Because after World War I, Germany was stripped of an army of under 100,000. They could have no standing army more than 100,000. They couldn't have any planes, and they were limiting the amount of tanks that they could have. Also, they, made, they were made to sign that armistice, the ending World War I. They were made right. to sign that right. knowing that they would have to agree that they started all this and they called But wait, what's the, what's the armistice? I, I, I read that a lot. I see, what's that, like a truce? Oh, yeah, no, the armistice was a treaty. They just called it the armistice. It was a treaty that ended World War I. But they didn't, they didn't end it on their terms. They, they kind of just kind of was salty about it, pretty much. And who, who was salty about it? The, the Allied Germany, powers. right? <clears throat> Germany was salty because they had to admit that they caused all of this financial war of Europe, which meant now that they've officially admitted to starting it, all the countries in the world can get together, well, the ones that were involved, and say, you owe us reparations. So instead of owing one person reparation, Germany now owed all these countries, France, England, United States, Finland, blah, 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 all these countries he owed reparations to, Germany owed reparations to, impossible to pay. So Germany's economy was taking a nosedive faster than everybody else during the Depression. I said jokingly, but they were taking the nose down. During that time, just like during these times, listen to the similarity. This guy was a very fearful talker. And he said, listen, we need to get Germany back. During World War II, Germany was annexed. People took the Rhineland, went to France, no, went to one country, uh, 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 another play. France took another piece. <clears throat> the international community uh, uh, took over the oil wells. So Germany wasn't left with anything. So this guy came up and said, we need Germany for Germans. Make, Ger was, make, make Germany great again? Make, exactly. And, he, and modern day mega is mimicking exact strategies that happened during that time. So this guy came up and he galvanized the people. And um, I can't remember the guy who was head of the country at the time. Can't remember his name, but anyway, he died. Number two man who was then made chancellor by that time, who was Adolf Hitler, took control of the country. <clears throat> um, and blah, blah, blah. That's how he got it. But going back, during those 30s, he was named the man here. He brought the economy back. He yeah. started telling Germany, we need to he buy Germany. The war in September 1st, 1939. Though so that's an official date. That's a date that Europe is accepting. Because what about in 1938? What about in 1939? When they, what about in 37 and 38? When he was rolling up 36, when the Royal Land and, the, and, and what became a DME, the DMZ zone. In 1938, when he started proposing taking this stuff back. See, the first shot may have been fired in 39. You gotta be careful about Europeans and the way they describe history. Because they don't like to let themselves look stupid. Um, but when he came to power, he said, Germany for the Germans. That meant we make Germany buy, we're going to be self-sufficient. We're not importing anything because that's how they hurt us after World War I. England imposed their ability to send, import all of their goods to us. We had to pay the tax, tax, tax on it. If you grow your own food, you make your own factory, blah, 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 blah. 
We don't need to import anything. That's why the German economy became strong. It became what's their what's their what's their thing? What they what do they got? Like uh, technology, right? What's their they got agriculture in Germany? Agriculture, industrial might, engineering capabilities. Remember, they're the one who get, made the first missile into you know, they the ones who came up with all this technology that we stole. Germany engineer as a matter of fact, German engineers worked on the atom bomb here. We took them, brought them here, kidnapped them from that's a whole nother story. That's so now, now, get, yeah, go ahead. Go, well, so 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 the war kicks off in, in, in thirty nine or thirty seven, he starts rolling with his muscle. No shots go off. Shot goes off thirty nine. Now we need deep well, they need deep in the war. What was the money? He wanted to control Europe pretty much. I see he divided Russia at one point. He, he divided Czechoslovakia with Russia at one point. Let them keep some mines. I think they had like iron ore. I don't even know what iron ore makes. What, is, what do you make with iron ore? Bullets? Iron. Steel. Mmm. Mmm. Steel. But remember, don't forget, don't forget the other piece, though. He was made man of the year. Two years later, we're at war with him. He was killing Jews during this time. He was killing blacks during this time. He was killing the mentally ill at this time. We named him Man of the Year in Time Magazine. So now you can't skip over this stuff because our, our complicity in this thing is reeks with it. We sold him the chemicals. As a matter of fact, it is said that Bush's dad, granddad, was one of the major players selling chemicals that made up the gases that gassed the Jews in Nazi Germany. We were making buku money, but we were we were not we weren't involved in the war. Yeah, yeah I wasn't was ready. Uh, yeah, I wasn't even ready. I didn't I, I didn't know that we I, I th but see hold up time out. I thought we was I thought we going fast forward just a little bit. I thought we was fueling the, the Allies troops with with tanks and battleships. So, but prior to that, we we no 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 simultaneously. Don't say simultaneously. You're not living in a country that has ever been very honest. So we have to take that look at history. And mind you, there's different perspective on this, but the one united perspective is that we definitely sold weapons to both sides. That's why we were neutral in that war. We weren't getting involved in it. World War I was it. We're not getting no more involved in European wars. So, so in World War I, who's fighting that one? Germany and Europe. France, England, the United States had to get involved. So that's why, okay, so that's why Winston Churchill had to, pretty much had a, 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 a grudge against that. He won't even bow down. He won't say anything. You know, he, he, he didn't want no parts of it, pretty much. He, well, he wanted, we wanted war. We wanted war with Hitler bad. Yes. But, well, we didn't want war. They, he wanted war, but he wasn't in charge when it started. Chamberlain was. Chamberlain died, or he resigned or something, but then... Winston Churchill, Winston Churchill was named the, the leader of Germany. And everybody named him because he was the no, one that England, had... No, England, not Germany of England. I mean, England. England. He was the one that was diametrically opposed to Chamberlain's policies of letting Germany take what it wants and it'll be satisfied. Remember, you know why Germany was taking all of these places? Because at the end of World War I, the United... The League of Nations, which the United States never joined, took all of these things from them. They took parts of Germany, gave it to France took parts of, gave it to Russia, took, took parts of, gave it to somebody else, committed a DMZ, a demilitarized zone like they did in Korea and like they did in Vietnam, C created a so, demilitarized Hold up, where did, the, where did that wall come into play at? Did that have something to do with that, the, that DMZ? That war, the war went up because the United States made a deal with Russia to win the war. When the war was over, the United States reneged. So German, Russia said, you renege? You think you bad? <laughs> Let's go. That's when the Cold War started. So they divided, uh, uh, um, Berlin was divided in half. East Berlin and West Berlin. So you know which side they were, right? Because they were East. We were West, but the West is always good. We took West Berlin, they took East Berlin, and they put up a wall dividing the two. And that's why but, the war went. So with this, okay, hold up, though. So we made a deal with, with Russia. Who was that? Stalin at the time, right? Yes. So we made a deal with Stalin. We reneged. Who killed what, by what, what year? What year, what year are we talking? Because this is what World War One. It's like 1905. World War One started early 1900s. No, 1916, 15, 16. Okay, so this is before the Depression. Okay, okay. I'm just trying to see. Before, I remember, so, so by the time, so by the time we had the whole Cuban Missile Crisis and all that, 
we've been we've been had bad dealings with Russia. Oh, Cuban Missile Crisis. That's the that's fifty six. What year? No. This Cuban Missile Crisis was was later fifty nine. Was it fifty six? This the Cuba started acting up in fifty six because that's when they took the country over. Fidel Castro and them, but the missile thing with the point I'm pointing the missiles at Florida that wasn't until later because Kennedy was in office and, and Eisenhower was in office in '56. Wow, Kennedy, that's, um, that's that's 60, it was '62. Yes, <clears throat> yes, so that was way later than I thought, but that was part of the Cold War that started from that whole this whole thing from World War One, pretty much. Yeah, I'd like to, I'd make the connection. Yes, a lot of historians would. They said World War One was different than World War Two, but because of World War One, Germany was pissed off that so much was taken that people were left without resources to rebuild. All the, the the natural resources, oil and stuff, was taken away. All of that was taken. So this guy rose up, Hitler, and said, "Let's take it back." And that's the connection between World War One and World War Two. The problem. So he that must have. They must have had some money then, because I mean. If, if you take an L and the West splits up your land, you take a loss, still recoup and come back with a whole army. Not that he had a, a crazy big army. He was more of a strategist than anything, but what, where was the money coming from? The engineering, the agriculture? Because what he said was, what he started with the economic development campaign of Germany for Germany. That means you buy German, you produce German, you import as least as possible. When you do that, how many, if, if the money moves around in your neighborhood 20 times, it's a wealthy neighborhood. If it moves around the country 20 times, it's a wealthy country. That's why they named him Man of the Year, because he, he came, he brought his economy up. People were pleased with him. Yeah, we know he's killing a couple of people, but look at what he's doing for the economy. I got a good job. You know what I mean? A lot what they're saying about Trump. Uh, we know, it, but look what he's doing for so-and-so. You know, so that like I would say, the similarities are striking, but again, when you look at the work that Hitler did to develop the hearts and minds and the patriotism of Germans for Germany, that's why they, he called himself the Führer, their father, and they responded to it because he brought them from the ashes. And when he was building this army secretly, what he was also building secretly was tanks. Homeboy rolled up with 50,000 tanks on them. They were nobody in the world was expecting that. So he was doing all of this stuff on the DL. He had an air force, the Luftwaffe, he had the Luftwaffe, answer. yeah, the Luftwaffe. They got busy. <laughs> Those guys took it. But, but see, got, the thing but is, though, this is what I'm saying. I was about to say, because they didn't, what we're saying is a lot, but compared to Allied forces combined, it wasn't as much, right? Um, but he was his strategy was crazy. The way he in entered into France through Belgium, the way, like you said, the way they, you know, you know, just secretly the clandestine movements that they had was just a lot to be learned, especially if you're saying now also it's the, uh, you know, dollars went around Germany five times. I don't want to say there's a lot to be learned because that, that, that be, people could take that the wrong way. But in certain aspects, I guess you can learn from any situation. Well, one of the, uh, the only aspects I've come out of, because, again, when he came to was the far Arden Forest, that's what he came into. He, he, had three, he had three divisions, three armies, A, B, and C. B was on top, coming down into, coming into France from the north. C was coming in from the south. And A was the main source was coming straight across. But nobody expected him to come straight across because that was a forest. The forest is a natural barrier, a natural line of defense because you got to maneuver these trees. Homeboy oh. brought the tank through the trees just like Hummel brought the elephant over the Alps. Yeah, no, nah, he has some, they had some crazy tanks that had like, um, yeah, I mean, it looked like weed whackers on the front that was tearing trees <laughs> down. They, they could come straight through the woods for real. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, they, 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 they really, they, he really did. He really came through with that. When he came through with that and he trapped the uh, British forces, the British forces, that was Dunkirk. The British forces had to go north to the northern border where the, 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 the port was, the largest port city, Dunkirk and wait to be escaped. And all the British vessels, I mean, rowboats even, sail ships, anything that can float, 
just went south to Dunkirk and got all the soldiers. I think it was almost like 150 soldiers were evacuated. It was like the largest number of soldiers ever evacuated from a war scene. Um, <clears throat> well, well, nobody we, expecting him to come to the forest. How did we get to Africa? Like, where does Africa connect? Is he was he was going for Europe, right? Russia was because going for a little piece. Was, you, who? Everybody was already in Europe. Everybody was in Europe. Germany had European Germany. Germany was South Africa. Why do you think they speak that way? Germany already. They, that's all of that was taken for, from Germany during World War One. But, 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 but how was Africa involved in the conflict? I know Japan wanted to to run wild in the, in the east. I know. Mussolini was running wild with Italy and, and uh, probably Libya, I would assume, up north. But that's Africa. Okay, that, but that, was, that where the, was, was that where the conflict was at? Those two up there in that region? For the no, 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 no. No, no, you're looking at Africa as a country. No, no, no. Africa. I know Africa is a continent, but I'm just no, no, saying, I'm like. I'm talking about militarily. I want to know where the conflict was at, though. What countries were they at? Just, I don't know. just those I don't, two? Like, just I don't those know two? How I don't know how Jermaine and Ansa I can give if I if I own your house. What conflict you give me if I go to the bathroom? If I take your toilet paper, you know. I so I don't I don't know where your question. I own you. You don't have a conflict. Really. I say produce me more. Just go out in the field and do it. So because they were colonies, Africa was an independent state for taking sides in the war. Ethiopia, all these countries: Egypt, Libya, uh, 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 Sudan. I mean, even India, my Uncle Chris, your Uncle Chris, our Uncle Chris, was stationed in India while my father was in Japan. He spent the whole war in India. Because but see, British... this is what I'm saying. This is what be throwing me off. Because when you hear World War II, you hear that. But then people like, 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 like Uncle Chris and Big Pop, they be in all these other wild countries. You see, like, per se, every private Ryan, the dude had a bag full of dirt from, like, six countries. So I just want to... It's, it's a world war. The whole world is in I see. The first people to start the war against Germany, I think you said 1939, was uh, England. Who were their allies? New Zealand and Australia. That's way on the other side of the planet. Oh, I got you. I got you. You I, see I, what I'm saying? The I, I world was in it. war. Yes, there was a world war. Canada was in it. Everybody was in that yeah, it was. I know we had got in it with Canada. Canada got in with us for Normandy. And because it was us, Canada, and um, I hate, I hate you just saying us, but the U.S., <coughs> Canada, and um, it was somebody else that stormed on. Probably Britain, I'm thinking. I, I know that's who he was helping. Yeah, it was 160,000. That was our first entrance into the joint. So, as a so military, huh? That's our first entrance into the war as a military. As, as military, I, yes, yes. The bus are good, we definitely. We were selling arms to both sides all the while. Hold up. So when they say support, we're giving support with arms. They're not giving it to them. It's a, it's a price tag on all that. All that's, all that's price tagged up. <laughs> I'm not even sure. <laughs> <laughs> There's no such thing as a... <laughs> But yeah, so, they were selling. Um, that's how, yo, that's why much No, hold that's up, though. So that's not me. really. So hold up, though. So that's, we, we can't say that that's allies, though, Pop. Because that's like saying, you know, we, you know, me and Devon about to go fight these two dudes over here. And then you, we bump into you on the way to over there, wherever over there is. And he's like, I got y'all back. We allies. But I'm going to sell you this. I'm going to sell you this knife on your way there. Nah, man. If you my ally, I thought they was throwing <laughs> You're supposed to be throwing. <laughs> yeah, man. Throw come down. on, we'll get this knife back. <laughs> you know, talking about uh, oops. I almost knocked over my dick. got me laughing so hard. Talking about allies in that context. I remember one time when we was living in Reed Street and Uncle Rashid had a house and drug addicts took over crack acting. And I wanted to clear it out. So I asked his brother, I said, you know, I need a, I need a gap. I need some steel. I need to handle something. He said, what? I told him what. He came over with his other brother. He pulled out. He said, pick one. I picked one. I said, well, what's up? He said, we all going. That's an ally. <laughs> That's an ally. Exactly. That's an ally. He said, if you got a problem, we got a problem. And yeah. happened, we went into the building. <laughs> I cleared it out. But uh, he, they didn't sell me the <laughs> Yeah. Well, so America, yo, America ain't, yo, man, we low down dirty. 
it, it's about money. That's why we sold the, the, the components that make that made up the gas, that gas, the, 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 in the gas chambers in, in, in Germany, because it was money to be made. We were an industrial might. We were producing more things of metal than any country in the world, and Germany was coming up strong. You know what made us attack Germany after we made him man of the year and thought he was doing such a great job for the economy? Right. This is my opinion, and I know a lot of people are going to have a lot to say about it. The Central Bank of Germany. Hitler said, I dissolve that. You dissolve the Central Bank? Let's talk about other people who dissolve Central Bank. Abraham Lincoln. John F. Kennedy. Saddam Hussein. Is this list becoming any familiar to you? Wait, yeah, um, yeah, they're all dead. But look, my man so you're saying, when they say he wants to, hold up though, when, you, when, you, when they're saying, I know a lot of the stories behind these people you name it, but do you saying dissolve it, meaning just their involvement, like Germany wants no more part of it, or are they trying to take it down? No, it's down. You can only have a central bank if your government has, uh, has a, le uh, a legislative process to say okay. When did, when, did Kennedy, when did Kennedy do that? It was, I think it was 1190-something executive order. I can't remember the number, but it's out there. He signed an executive order eliminating the central bank because the central bank was the, That's why Hitler said, and that's why the Jews will never let us forget, he said, <clears throat> Germany is not owned by Germans. The money comes from the Jews. He, if he would have said the money came from the international banking community, the Jews would have been out of the picture. But because they're people who started Rockefeller and all these guys, because they were all Jews who started this conspiracy in the United States to reform the international bank and the banks around the world, they control the international banking conglomerate. He said the Jews. German, uh, Britain had its control on textiles or whatever it was. He just wanted to get rid of all foreign uh, 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 resources that, that, that boasted his country's economy and wanted the economy to stand on its own. And it was, because he was producing tanks and planes and cars. The Volkswagen was made during that time, called the People's Car, the Volkswagen, that's the thing. People's Car. He wanted a car for the everyday man, just like the Model T Ford did in the United States portion of it is very important to talk when you talk about war. You can't talk about it out of the context of the economic piece. And Germans wanted, Hitler wanted Germany to be German, for Germany. Strategically, I don't believe that he was this mastermind that everybody says he was in terms of strategic uh, warfare. He did, he made a gamble of going through the Arden Forest and won that gamble. He surrounded the troops. Germany, I mean, uh, Britain had to ferry those 150,000 troops out of there. He now controlled that entire portion of this country again. He was manager. They took but it. He wasn't, he wasn't like a great, he definitely wasn't a great strategist like, like that, like, put, like but, a general that would put pieces in play. But I think that he made what he had work. The little he had, he had the tanks, but they said a lot of them tanks could catch on fire. They, they were sardine cans once they caught on fire. But what he did was he had the morale of the people with that whole, you know, German for Germany for Germans thing. And dude, dudes, we don't really have that a lot here. We don't have dudes that's going to go on a plane and just be ready to die for everything like right now. Like, they said Germany didn't even have a, a, a maintenance department. If your tank broke down, you got to get out with your rifle. And they said it was, it was a lot of horses, a lot of horses that got slaughtered. And they kept saying, like, you know, where do Germans keep getting these horses from? So I think he just made it work. I think when they say strategists, and France and them made a lot of mistakes too. He just monopolized, on, capitalized on mistakes that they made because they were sleeping. And he well, was sleeping too, ultimately, when, you know, when he went down. So he definitely wasn't a great I think, strategy. I, I, I understand the point that you're making, and, and it's a widely accepted one. I just, I just beg that everyone look at it from this perspective. <clears throat> that one move he made coming through the Arden Forest, made him a strategic genius. That's Where's, why he Hold up, put, put it in the context a little bit. Where is the Arden Forest? North of Germany, east? It's northeast of Germany. All right. So, when that, of, so remember- Opposite of Belgium and-, and, and, and He came into Austria, France. That's Austria then. Exactly. He went into Austria. They said, well, let him have Austria. 
We took Austria from him during World War I. If we let him have it, he'll stop his aggression. That's what they said. But Poland, Austria, they kept saying that. He kept coming. Now he said, let's go get Britain. But that's a couple of years ahead. <laughs> but, but so when he went out Austria and he came in from the north, the other troops came up from the south. The Ardenaris, no, that's important to understand. No one expected him to take tanks through this forest. It, it's a natural war barrier. He did it. That's why he was considered a genius. But now let's look at his other moves he made. When he went up against uh, uh, England, it was bombing, bombing England. They said something happened. One of the night flights, night bombings, uh, uh, one of the planes got lost in the fog and dropped bombs on London. Mm -hmm. And nobody said, so you didn't bomb civilian posts prior to this. You know, you bombed military posts. But they were bombing cities. And they made a mistake, well, towns anyway. They made a mistake and dropped the bomb on London. East London, I think it was. Devastated it. Mm -hmm. England responded immediately with dropping blue Berlin to pieces. And nobody expected that because now Churchill's involved. And Churchill said, we're not surrendering. We're not signing a peace treaty. We're going down. Yeah, he didn't and, want he, to talk. and he did too. When they dropped them bombs on East London, homeboy said, drop them bombs on Berlin. And that's when the aerial thing started. But when the German came back, British was ready. And their their fighters, I think they had the spit fighter. I think it was quite I remember. They right, had the, the spit fighter. They 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 just blew Germany's air air air, air attack away. And England and, and but that, that kept making that kept making Hitler angry. He said, "More attacks, more attacks." That's he, he lost his cool, and because he lost his cool there, he ignored the Russians rolling up to take uh, uh, Poland back. He ignored Russians moving up. By the time he was ready, he said, "Look, let's stop bombing England. Let's get back to the Eastern Front, and let's get let's get Russia, or you know USSR, but Russia. Let's get the, the USSR." That's and by, by the time he went out there, Russia had already had 100,000 new troops trained and shipped from its eastern borders all the way over to its western borders. These guys knew how to fight in the cold, work in the cold, repair vehicles in the cold. Germany didn't have anybody to repair its vehicles. So when the yeah, tanks went down, pieces of junk. Yeah. They, were just, they didn't have supply lines, so people starved to death. Starved to death. That's why you they were eating horses. They starved to death on the line because Germany couldn't. Oh, there was, I didn't know he was eating the horses. They said they had a lot of horses. I didn't hear them say nothing about yeah, the I, I, I threw that. I think they were eating horses. They didn't have anybody to eat. They didn't have any food. What would they eat? <laughs> eat other dead bodies? I mean, Europeans yeah. don't for Give me a script in one neck. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, so, but, but, but Russia was ready for them. And just, they stood there. They got caught in that winter. That snow buried the German troops. People, re people would, re were, 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 uh, 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 what do you call it? Defect, not defecting. When you give up, I surrender. Oh, people just surrendering, huh? white flag. The Germans were surrendering. Just take me to a concentration camp and feed me. Take me to a war crimes camp and feed me. Give me some socks and coats and blankets. But we freeze it out here. That's how German lost that front. So now Russia said, USSR said, let's roll in and get Berlin. United States said, let's roll in and get Berlin. We won't say it, but they were the first ones in Berlin, not us. They were so, the ones who lived in Berlin. So was that part of the Rene? So was that part of the Rene? No, that wasn't no, it wasn't no, no thing about the, there was a contest, but But I'll say it anyway. Pakistan came after World War, but that that whole North part I thought of Pakistan India. Was, I thought Pakistan was British. No, pa yeah, it was India. It didn't become Pakistan until 1946, 47, and Mahatma Gandhi went there and right, they became. Right. But the influence in that area. Now I'm I'm speaking when anything else. So now that you got and Russia has. 
a whole bugubbly amount of oil. Russia got mad oil, which is why we tread lightly on China today, because China and Russia made a deal 30 years ago. You pump your oil, I buy your oil, we got a deal. That means nobody's trushing you from your eastern back side because I'm China. I got you on this side. China, wait, Russia wait, wait, said, wait, wait. So Russia, so Russia had a deal. Why did that deal never work? That sounds like an idea of China pumps. You saying Russia and China would have had a deal where they, they do have oil. A, they do have a deal. This to this day, Russia and China are a partners because of that oil, and it makes makes it even cheaper. If there's no, you don't have to ship the oil in tankers. They built a pipeline from Russia into China. <laughs> they just turned the spigot and get all the oil they want. So hold up. So this was going on. Yo, we talking about the war, man. We just we just talking about strategies. We talking about we talking war. about the after after the war. We talking about the no, 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 I'm just explaining to people who anybody who just might have checked in. I see Ty just checking. We just talking <laughs> about wars, and war strategies, and a World War Two, World War One, just the whole connecting some dots over there in Europe. But Korea. so. So how, you, you said this deal with Russia and China went back to, what, 1947? Well, the relationship, that deal didn't happen until much, much, much later, like 60s, 70s. But the relationship, the common interest that they had, they were both communist countries. Mm. They shared the same land mass. If they play their cards right, China will get us from, the, from our West Coast. And, and Russia will get us from the East Coast. We're surrounded. So they said, instead of playing games, let's have a Cold War, where we have wars with proxy that I'm going to use all my, my economic power and economic strength. And Yo, is he breaking up? Yo, Power, I think you're breaking up. Yo, hold up. Oh, there you go. That's a China. Back now. Mm -hmm. okay. You lost. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. So you start talking about the pipeline in China. So, uh, oh yeah, and China gets all the oil they want. Just turn it off. Because that was a big deal so with Japan. Is, Japan wanted to get. That was a big. That was a big deal with Japan. Japan wanted to get in in World War Two. And they was lacking a lot of oil due to their cutoffs. And now that makes sense. They was cut off with China and different places. But they wanted to go to the Philippines. You're breaking up. Because the Philippines had the, had the next set of reserves in that region. But that's where they was treading. And, you know, they was with the U.S. treading back and forth until the first shot went off over that oil. Well, see, the United States created a, a naval embargo of China. They wouldn't allow any Japanese ships to enter China. If you know anything about war, to give this to form a naval embargo is an act of war. So we in, introduced the concept of war in the East before Japan bombed Pearl Harbor, which is why Japan bombed Pearl Harbor. I was about to say that's when um the big dude, I can't think of the dude's name, the head, he went to like some type of UN deal over there and asked them to vote and they voted and kind of sided with the u.s he, he he left that meeting kind of tight i'm mad i don't have his name i i forgot who's going here with this guy too but um not your komodo man who's his name he was a big general at them times there but um the u.s general wow. u.s general he was, he was, i'm about to look it up right now so McCarthy. so you saying that, that was an act of war? What type of embargo was it? That the ships couldn't come through for battle? Naval. Or like commerce? It, yes. It, well, an embargo is an embargo. I don't think they, they was very specific about what was on the ship. As long as the ships were from coming from Japan, they weren't allowed into China. Mm -hmm. Now, Japan was asking, why are you doing this? And you're fighting Europe, a war in Europe. We're not bothering you. We're not bothering you. When, when they sat down, when I think it was Japan, Germany, France, England, United States sat down after World War I to form the League of Nations, two countries didn't join. One was the United States. The other one was Japan. Japan said, no, nah, I'm good. Because yeah, the United was, States... It was Yamamoto. I said Yamakoto. It was Yamamoto. Yamamoto. Yeah. 
You know, these guys, these guys were playing, the United States knew the capability of Japanese industrialism. And if they wasted all of their time fighting Germany, Japan would have risen to be an economic power, which it, which it wound up doing anyway, with all the war restrictions and not having an army and air force and all of that kind of stuff. We buy, everything we buy comes Hold from up. Japan. Hold up, so they have, their war restriction is still to this day that they can't have an army. Do they have an army now? Japan can't have an army. They just, like, just like Germany couldn't have an army. Hitler just said, stop me. <laughs> Wait a minute. So, bring, bring your best. <laughs> yeah. So, so Japan... Bring Wait, so wait, I mean, I ain't going to get back on Hitler. Hitler's a, a beast. He started, I didn't realize that with Hitler, but so Japan can't have on. Who bombed who first? Pearl Harbor came before the, 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 the two atomic bombs, right? Oh, yeah, years before. Pearl Harbor was 41. The atomic bomb was 45. So what, what, what was the motive behind the atomic bomb? They got us with Pearl Harbor. We was fighting it out. So, you know, you slapped me first. Now we shooting the fair one. <laughs> 